Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So, okay, great. Um, all right. So my name is Ethan Hunter. Um, I am a WordPress enthusiast. Um, I'd say, gosh, I would say maybe about six months before the, the last WordPress Sacramento camp um, happened, I um, uh, kind of fell into WordPress. So I've been working in the food industry forever and kind of looking for, you know, a different, a different place to be in. Um, so I kind of found free code camp. I started doing that and, um, started finding some local meetups. Uh, people were doing JavaScript. So I kind of jumped into that, the, that meetup morphed a few times, ended up being more word development or, um, you know, uh, just website development in general. Uh, and through that, I found a, a mentor who kind of turned me on to WordPress. So, um, that's kind of where I, I started at. Um, found WordPress because I thought, um, you know, I really just wanted, I didn't want to do the coding, <laughs> but I wanted to present a product and I wanted to work with people um, and building websites. So kind of taking on the, you know, the local library, community centers, things like that, learning how to build websites um, and then kind of transferred into that now. So I have True North Design, which is kind of my um, beginnings of a, of a company or agency or whatever, it's just me right now. So, um, and, uh, you know, do some local uh, websites and help like that. So I'm building that. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, I also work in town here in Grass Valley uh, in Nevada County at r &B Communications. So, um, so kind of getting back to the Sacramento WordPress uh, um uh, WordCamp, um, one of the cool things that was there, right, was uh, there was a talk about accessibility. So kind of, you know, took that class and and ever since then, it's kind of been on my peripheral. So um, full disclaimer, like I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, I'm going to give you the best I can, uh, the things that I know. Uh, please feel free to chime in if I'm wrong or if you have something to add. Um, but anyway, so um, that's me. Um, we're going to have just kind of an open discussion. I'm going to give you kind of an overview of accessibility. Um, not really necessarily we're going to talk about WordPress, but we'll show some plugins and different things like that at the end that you can use. But basically just give you an idea of what accessibility is. So um, let me share my screen. OK. All right, so uh, what is accessibility? So um, I like to just kind of just start this talk off. Like, so I one of the first uh, meetups that I went to recently because there are some meetups around accessibility and WordPress. Um, I got turned on to this. So A11Y stands for accessibility. Um, there's 13 letters in accessibility, and that's what it is. So when you guys see this really cool way of of saying accessibility, uh, just so that I'll clue you in. All right, so. Um, that's that. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, not the smartest guy in the room, but I'm here to share and have a discussion. So let's jump right into it. Um, all right. So what is accessibility? All right. So um, so the ADA, right? So the Americans with Disability Act, um, which I think was passed in 1991, kind of has a, a, a thing in there that says that all websites um, need to you know, be developed and designed uh, with accessibility um, or disabilities in mind. So these are people like visual, audio, physical, speech, cognitive, neurological disabilities, right? And the goal is to basically ensure that the dis disabled people can perceive, understand, navigate, and interact with websites basically the same way as people that don't have disabilities. All right. So what is this? It, it includes um, alt text, which we all know, right? So making your images descriptive, not just putting in, you know, something really basic like, uh, you know, photo or even sometimes we'll see the title of the file that we use. But if you see a dog running in the grass, that would be a description, right? So writing that down. Another important thing um, that we want to try to provide for people is colors making sure that we're paying attention, especially when it comes to contrast. So contrast being black on white or, you know, maybe gray on white isn't going to be as strong of a contrast. Another thing is like simple and clear language, right? So a lot of times writing maybe at a, at a, a, a more readable level for somebody who's maybe, you know, 
fifth grade, sixth grade, eight, you know, a little bit less um, in the language. So making sure your writing's, you know, not super wordy, right? Obviously like a scientific thing or something like that, that's gonna have a little bit more intense language. But in general, we think about it like that. And then obviously navigation, right? So um, one of the things there, right, uh, for example, would be your headers, right? So header one, header two, header three, having some sort of sequential thing or having, being able to navigate, you know, is this a link, is this a button? Is this, you know, what is this? So having that kind of navigation. Um, all right, so here's the catch, right? So we know the ADA has a, um, uh, a, um, a requirement that you need to do this, right? But we don't have it really spelled out to us. <laughs> so that's a big problem, right? So we know we have this requirement, but the, the, the law itself doesn't say, do this, 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 and this, right? So how do we figure that out? Um, basically, there is the uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, otherwise known as the uh, WCAG, or I've heard it like WGAC or something like that, So or WGAG. Um, there have been different kind of uh, versions of this. Right now, we're at 2.0 is what we're looking for, and they're even developing 2.2. Um, again, you know, uh, making sure that there are certain standards that are met, like alt tags, captions for videos, clear nav navigation, readable font sizes, so make sure your fonts aren't too tiny. Um, and um, yeah, so in that WCAG um, and uh, is kind of what we call like three levels or grades, right? So we have grade A, grade double A, and uh, triple A. Um, all right, so what are those, right? So we have three, we have uh, guidelines. We have three different uh, grades of guidelines to meet. Um, so the first one is just kind of grade A and it's really basic accessibility um, is what they're saying. So um, I would say most websites, like in particular WordPress that are built in, unless you just really didn't do your alt tagging, you didn't do your headers, you didn't do that, you're probably gonna be around grade A. Um, and that's just because luckily WordPress is, you know, building um, best, you know, decent practice websites. So they're, they're already thinking about some of those things. And the interesting thing here too, and just a little side note is that not only is accessibility great to do, but, you know, it's best practices, it's SEO, right? So if you're building a good website, you're probably going to be already halfway there. All right, so double A, right? So double A is just a little bit more of that. So kind of basically addressing most barriers people will have around accessibility. And then there's triple A. So this is super high level, um, really paying attention to all the content, all the UI, all the UX, um, and probably refining a lot, okay? Um, all right, so what we think, and this is what we're told, is that the ADA, um, has said that WCAG is is the guideline, and we're kind of looking for a double A, um, you know, a grade there. So let's go ahead and um, open up um, right here. I pulled up just Wikipedia, right? So um, basically, we're all going to go back to finding out what 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 the WCAG guidelines are. I pulled this one up because Wikipedia just got some really great stuff. It talks about its earlier stuff, its versions. But really what I wanted to show you is right here, and I hope you all can see this. I'll try to blow it up a little bit. So this is the first version they put out, and this is the second version they put out. And this is why I wanted to show you this, because this is where it gets like, well, what do I do? So here's a great checklist just to kind of go over right away, right? So here's my grade A, here's my grade double A, here's my triple A. Um, and even though they don't have links for everything, there is some stuff in here where, you know, you can just um, click on this link and it'll take you over to w3.org and give you way tons of information. <laughs> so um, this is where you can go, okay, I want to target, you know, text or I want to target this and then kind of looking at their guidelines. And that's kind of where you would um, educate yourself, right? So there's lots of tools out there like this one. Um, but again, I wanted to um, 
Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Again, I just wanted to show you here with the Wikipedia. Um, this is a great little graph here that will um, give you kind of a jumping point, right? So um, yeah, so that is the what, the what of accessibility. So let's get into the why. So why, why should, why should we do this? Why should we care about it? So there's probably lots of reasons, but I'm gonna give you three, right? So the first reason it's a legal requirement. Um, and so my understanding is that anybody who has federal funding, right? So if you're a government, you're federally funded. If you're a school, you're probably funded. Um, other organizations that are receiving federal funding um, definitely should be doing that. Uh, uh, you know, basically it's the law. We do know we have this gray area right now um, because we don't have it totally spelled out, but we do have those guidelines. So that's the first thing, it's legal, right? The second thing is just inclusive, right? So um, equity, it's just the right thing to do. <laughs> you know, it, it feels good. Um, uh, everybody should have that equ equitable, like um, ability to be able to, to do that. So, you know, and obviously we all know we're all tied to our phones or we're tied to our computer on some level. And you know, a lot of us are ordering everything online, you know, DoorDash, pickup, whatever. So making that um, part of your, you know, your, 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 your thought process around website design and, you know, digital content in general, um, it's just good. And so, right, so we've got legality, it's the right thing to do, and hey, pocketbook, let's talk about that, right? So um, if you um, are limiting 10, 20% of your audience and you're not getting those people buying your product, getting your service, getting your message out, you're missing out, right? And um, another thing that happens is a lot of these you know, disability groups have their own communities, right? So word of the mouth is huge. So people tell other people. So if I, if I go and say, hey, I have this disability, but I use this website and it works really well, that you know, creates a certain amount of loyalty and engagement around you. So again, it's helping your pocketbook. So the why is, the main three things is legal, it's the right thing to do, and um, financially, it's also the right thing to do. And one thing I touched on earlier too, um, it's just best practices. If you're gonna build a website, if you build it right, you're most likely gonna build it so that it's accessible for other people. Okay. So the next thing is um, uh, the how. All right, so uh, again, oops, I'm sorry. I'm forgetting that I'm over here, right. Okay, so the how. Um, so the first thing we need to do, right, is um, we wanna make our site web um, accessible. So we got to go and, and look at the guidelines, right? So familiarize ourselves with what we want to do. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back and we're going to um, go in our website and we're going to evaluate it. We're going to do some manual testing and I'll show you some things that we can do for manual testing. Um, and then there's some great tools out there, right, for automation of, of testing. Um, one being everybody probably knows mostly here in this environment. Um, your dev tools, right? They have an inspector. Um, so they actually have, you know, a way of, of running somewhat of an accessibility. I wouldn't say that's the one I would lean on, but it, it's another tool to use and a great place to start. So we evaluate our website based on the WCAG guidelines, uh, picking the grade that we want to kind of shoot for. Um, and then we identify those and then we prioritize them. So, okay, you know, my headers are totally out of sequence. Let's go do that. All right, I don't have any alt tags. Let's go do that. Uh, my contrast between certain images or text are bad. Let's go do that. So then we fix those errors. We go back again. We use uh, manual testing and then automated tools to um, do that. And then it's rinse and repeat and keep doing that. So the other thing about this is like, okay, we've done it, but we don't do it just once. We continually do it. We'll go back once a month. We'll always sit there and try to do at least something around auditing them and um, looking at uh, ways of improving. Or, you know, a lot of times, as we know, um, you know, uh, a client will have the website. They're uploading their own content, their own images. And um, 
that's where you know some of those pain points meet might be and that's also a great opportunity especially to educate the the end user the person who is actually managing the website to say hey this is what we need these are the things that you need to be aware of when you're working on your website and making it accessible so that is the how okay um and now we will get into the resources so um Lots of resources, right? So we have the W3C um, uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Um, there's Web AIM, so Web AIM. There is the Accessibility Project. Um, Section 508 has some standards that you can look at. Um, there are also other ADA um, standards for accessible design out there if you just kind of look around. Um, one thing that I like, and I'll show you that here in a second, is you know checker tools, things that are just built in on your Chrome, built into your website, uh, Wave, Axe, Site Improve. Um, I've used Wave and I like that one, that one's great. Um, and then there's people out there that are doing it. That's kind of where I'm like drawing some of my um, information and guidance from, right? It's just there are people already that are ahead of the curve that have been working in here for a while. Um, and so one thing that I, you know, uh, would like to give a props out to is Equalize Digital. Um, and they also have a WordPress uh, accessibility meetup. And that's happening a couple times a, a month. And they've got great content and um, great info there. Okay, so um, let's look at some of these resources, right? So we looked at kind of this one. This is, I would say, probably going to give you a lot of information, you know, so you can really drill down here, like, okay, I need to resize this text or images and text and a lot of these different things that we can go down and, and really learn about, right? Um, again, same thing here. So um, here's another one, right? So um, as we all know, uh, developers, um, Mozilla puts out some really great information. Um, and, you know, they just quickly and lots of these kind of, um, resources out there, right? So they just kind of talk about, you know, making sure things are perceivable, operable, and, you know, what should we use, you know? Um, anyway, so lots of information out there, things to be thinking about. Um, Web AIM is another one. So this is a great one as far as you can just kind of plug in um, checkers. There's many different tools here um, that you can use. To, you know, for example, there's this contrast checker, and I actually have one up here in the browser. I'll show you in a second. Um, again, uh, here's uh, Equalize uh, Digital. Uh, here's another great meetup. If you guys are meetup junkies, um, these guys, again, are putting out stuff, and this is their website. So they do offer a lot of great stuff. Um, one thing I wanted to just kind of put out there, but we won't probably touch into it because I don't have a, a website loaded up. Uh, for that, but I did kind of put there, they have a basically a, a, a plugin. So again, freemium and premium model um, that you can use on your site um, on the back end to help you kind of, you know, do some of your own auditing and things like that. And they do have, you know, obviously the free version and then the premium version comes with a lot more bells and whistles. Um, yeah, here it is right here. So, um, and I, I think that these guys, from what I can tell, are, are doing amazing work <laughs> in, in this field. And, and that's the beauty of WordPress, right? We have we have the, the community, and then we have these little niche communities inside that. And I, and I feel like this is a, this is a pretty good one. Um, again, this is something they're putting out, but um, I don't know if you guys are using social media, but, you know, if you're, if you're going to scroll through something, you know, these are always like, hey, I'm working on something. And you can kind of see a little bit of, of group comments kind of helping people, right? So, you know, a lot of this is just people sharing information. Um, and, of course, this is always a great resource as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's that. So let's do some cool things. So let's the first thing, right? So we mentioned um, the inspector tool. So for those who may not know it, um, this is a great way, right, to kind of um, kind of do different things in your website to um, oops, make it um, so that you can, 
you know, obviously troubleshoot or look at code. But one of the things that we do have here um, is Lighthouse, right? So some of you all might be familiar with that. Um, and they have their own kind of like analyzing or auditing, right? So you have, you can choose different mobile devices um, and then you can choose different things here. So like if we just wanted to do a real quick report here um, and it'll run its report. And and so this is one of the things that's built in, right? To almost every every browser, right? Is, is a developer tool that has some sort of accessibility on um, and so while it goes through there, does anybody have any questions so far? Oh, it looks like we have some activity in the chat. Oh, yeah, he's throwing all those in there. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. Um, well, this is going to take a little bit longer than I was hoping. Maybe I should have pulled it up ahead. Okay, so while that's loading, we'll come back to it so we don't have to waste time. Um, here's one of the really cool tools. So um, I think, so the first things that I like to start off with, right, is, is are my alt tags there? Are my images, do they have a descriptive alt tag? Um, do I have a sequential header? So this is like, those are the first two things I look at. And then the other thing that I look at is um, contrast. And so this plugin here, and I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me see if I can uh, get it to open. Um, yeah, okay, so contrast. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a C-O-N-T-R-A-S-T. Um, I have this on like a pretty much every browser that I use. Um, and then, so this is great. Like anytime you're in design mode, um, you've, made, you've got two pickers here. And I don't know if, if you all have used color pickers, different things like that in the past. But we have, you can see a foreground and a background. And then over here, we kind of have none. But um, anyway, so let's go ahead and we'll pick a pixel here. So we can get a dark one just so we have really good contrast. So we pick that foreground. And then over here, we're going to pick a background. And we pick that background. And do you see over here where it like gives us a triple A grade? So immediately, it's letting us know, OK, we have really good contrast. And, and getting back to that WCAG. Uh, different grades we have um, that obviously is really high. So this is um, probably one of my favorite tools. Um, and this is actually really great. So this is a, a good point to bring this up. Um, remember that accessibility starts before you even do any coding or any uh, spin up of a WordPress site or whatever. It starts in the design, right? So when you're having a conversation with your client and they like white on or, or light yellow on white, here's a great tool right away to go, hey, you know what? Um, that's probably not the best choice, right? So um, I like to use things like this just in the design process and, and tell people like, um, you know, we need to strive for a better contrast or you can actually show them why it's not good contrast. All right, so let's go back to this and see if it loaded. Oh, oh that's right. Okay, I'm sorry. I have like 100 browser um, extensions that throws it off. But anyways, it would give you a report of 80, 90, uh, something like that. I don't want to open another window. Um, but know that this is a tool. It's not the best tool. So let's go to what is probably a better tool for you to use. So again, we're um, using a Chrome browser. Um, and this is Wave, W-V-A-E. And you can see as soon as I click or activate this, we're already getting kind of an audit in here. And then you can kind of go through this and, and look at all the different things that it's saying, you know, these are the things you can approve on or these things that are passing. And you can see that they're even kind of pointing out a lot of, a lot of this stuff. So this is a great tool. This is pretty high level stuff here. Um, so I think if you're a beginner, I would be more like just looking for, you know, your alt tags, looking for contrast, looking for, um, your, your, your image, whatever. So, um, don't let this intimidate you. And there are things out here to kind of understand, um, how all these things are reading out. Um, okay. So that's in one tool. So, <clears throat> so this is a great tool that I 
found the other day um, because I was looking for a tool and I know that Mac does it and it's, you can kind of activate it um, and people probably know better than I, but you can do that like um, a speech kind of a thing with Mac. So there's a place in that, you know, you go to your preferences or whatever, and it's accessibility, you can turn on kind of that. So um, one thing that I found was that's really hard, uh, you know, to show other people. So I found this um, extension right here and it's uh, Silk Tide. A website accessibility simulator. Um, and so I like this site because, uh, okay, so for example, everything's uh, clicked off right now, but um, here's, a, here's a cognitive one, right? So um, here's a dyslexia simulator. So did you want, you know, you ever wanted to know what it's like for someone who's experiencing dy dyslexia? Um, boom. So you immediately, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it kind of, it kind of, warps the words a little bit but i think it kind of gives a you know at least kind of gives you some empathy or gives you kind of a, an understanding of of what somebody with that might be experiencing um again here's another one and i think this is one that people don't really think about in color selection is that um a lot of us a lot of the population has some sort of color blindness right so um this is also another great tool where you can just kind of go in and turn off and on. Let me see if you can see, kind of see where that blue was. And it was just a little bit of a variation there. Um, so this is kind of cool when you're really looking, you know, look at that blue now is more purple. So giving you kind of a perspective or you saw that red, right? Like that changed a lot. So that is, that's really cool. Again, you're getting kind of an understanding of what people have. So there is cataracts, there's tunnel vision, those are cool. But this is why I actually really like this tool because this is basically a, a quick quick fix screen reader. <laughs> so I really like this one um, because if you look over here, there is um, some choices, right? So you can kind of, you know, uh, short key stuff. And so my understanding is talking to people um, with blindness or eye, uh, disability or visual disabilities is even though I think a lot of times um, a website is intended to be navigated a, a certain way and even though a screen reader can do it a lot of times what I understand is that um, people with with visual disabilities will just use the header as a way of going through so this is why it's also really important that you have your your h1 h2 h3 tags um, in order, right? So that people can really get around your content in a way that makes sense. So um, I was just on a website that has um, no HTML. <laughs> it's built in Bootstrap. Uh, they're using CSS to define headers. So imagine a screen reader hitting something like that. Um, it's, it's, it's completely unusable for that person. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a really cool tool. Um, and, you know, cause that's one thing is people are like, oh, I don't know how to, to manually test that when we get back to that. So this is another way of, of being able to do that. Um, okay, so that is that. Let's see, did I touch on anything else? Um, yeah, I think that's it. So what I'd like to do is, um, we'll just kind of recap real quick here. So, um, Let's see here. So, uh, you know, um, let's go through it and we'll just touch my notes here. Um, apologize. All right. So what, right? ADA, um, it's the law. It's it's something that we, we need to be doing. Um, WCAG is there uh, to guide us. So that is the what of accessibility and websites. Um, uh, the why, right, is it's a legal requirement, again, <laughs> um, it's the right thing to do, um, and it's good for business, right? Um, and how are we going to do that? Again, we use the WCAG glide guidelines, um, and this is something I wanted to touch on. So this isn't just um, the guidelines for the U.S., um, places like the U.K., Canada, I think Israel are also using this as a guideline. So when when 
when everything coalesces and we actually have a written the written word of this is what it is, this the, the WCAG will be the thing that does it, right? So know your WCAG, evaluate your website, do automated testing, do manual testing, reach out to somebody with a disability. Um, that's also a great way. Um, identify your problems, prioritize them, make your changes, test it out, rinse, repeat, follow up on, um, on making sure that your site is accessible all the time. It's not a one-time fix. I think we'll see a lot of times, and I've even been guilty of it, to put that little like accessibility add-on it's the little icon and it opens up and people are like okay i've done it I'm, you know um and not necessarily but i think my understanding is in a lot of situations you know people aren't necessarily being sued but they're being like asked to um and so i think that um we all should be working on our websites rinse and repeating um to make that happen um yeah, so that is kind of everything that I um, have for you all. Um, I'd like to maybe open it up to maybe some questions or uh, discussion around it. You know, the uh, I, it, this is Mark from Matt Mahome. You know, I think it's uh, this is a great conversation you guys are uh, that you're doing here and i think you've done a lot of great research you know a while ago we had found a plugin called wp accessibility have you heard of that one i have not um i have tried a couple i think um a while ago i added a library website that i was doing um i haven't tried that one in particular I, i'm just going to say just my own experience that the um uh the accessibility website uh a meetup and um, um, the one that uh, Equalized Digital is doing, it looks pretty great. Yeah, I know. Um, it, it isn't like, you know, user forward, right? So it doesn't have all those bells and whistles. It's more informing you on the back end. Yeah. yeah well, the WP Accessibility plugin will actually do some changes or at least identify what you need to do. And I think contrast is, was a big one um, that I noticed and <laughs> because it goes through and evaluates your pages. Um, so it was kind of interesting. There's a guy named Joe Dobson, 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 I think, came up with it, and he was involved with some group, maybe the group you you've been dealing with. But uh, yeah, is there any other plugins you've noticed to help out on the website itself? No, like I said, um, just the basic ones of of, of using of of doing that. I mean, I think it's still really new. You know, I think. When I was uh, asking people about this two years ago, they were kind of like, "Oh, we don't, we don't talk about that," <laughs> you know. And I, I think because a lot of coders felt really pressured to 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 do something, and I think designers have issues around it too. So, um, as far as the actual plugin, I, I couldn't recommend anything other than um, you know, you, there are many different plugins out there for WordPress that will you know adjust your contrast, blow up your fonts, um, things like that. Um, well, you know, in there, if you read their change log and their kind of FAQ, the, you know, the one thing they comment about is that a lot of this can be solved by the theme creators, right? So, you know, like, and then I noticed in this thing was, that it's like, oh, our text is a little bit, not black, but kind of like a dark gray or whatever else. And so it's like, can we, you know, how do we go and make sure our, our text is okay? And I'm like, well, why isn't the theme let me do that? The theme should be able to say, hey, you, you know, you need to have better contrast and they should be able to do that in their standard fonts and everything else. And I think that was one of the things that was a little difficult for us is trying to figure out how to automate that because the theme would override. And um, so have you experienced any of that where the, the theme makers or like, were you, did you say you're doing themes or someone said they're doing themes or plugins? I just think it's like WordPress could do something here and have it built in. You could, obviously it's, it's open source. It's probably a little hard to just say they need to do it. Um, and then the other one was the theme manuf creators. Really, they're in control, right? And uh, it seems like if they can go off and fix most of the stuff, then things like alt text that you bring up is really important. That's not something they're going to fix. That's something you have to do. Um, but I think it's dividing it up between where the, the changes need to happen and, and by who. You know, like 
you as the as the site builder, you got to put the alt text in. You as the theme guy, you need to come up with the you know make sure your theme is accessible. It just seems like that would be a much more efficient approach than asking every little site out there to go off and do these this thing every month. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I do know that there are some themes that are are building accessible. You know, so I think that if that is your concern, you would definitely want to do that. I mean, let's face it; like a lot of times, things are just limiting, right? So I think that you know, in in the end, I think we do have to like kind of, you know, vet it a little bit, if you will. Um, you know, I mean, you can always. Well, my understanding, you know, my experience is you can always tweak themes in CSS. <laughs> You know, you can always kind of get what you need out of it. Um, you know, even if you're trying to set maybe some stuff globally. Um, I build a lot with with Elementor. So, um, you know, um, we can set things globally like that. So, you know, we just go in and say, okay, well, this is the paragraph font size, um, you know, and then text selection, right? Or font selection. I think that's something that didn't really mention, right? But, you know, you don't want some, a very decorative, right a uh, font you know you obviously sans. don't use, you don't only use comic sans in in paragraphs right um you know for readability and things like that um you know uh, one thing that didn't really touch on is that you know not everybody that's disabled is disabled forever right so you know somebody might be temporary blinded or uh you know want without you know broke their arm or you know so they have mobility issues um you know, so I, I I think that when we design contrast text, we really want to think about you know other people besides just me using it, and 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 really get outside of that. You know, a lot of us are, are wearing glasses. <laughs> you know, take those off and then go ahead and try to read your font. You know, um, so you know. Say, uh, the number one for me is contrast. I mean, I get it drives me crazy sometimes that. I just feel like our theme's just a little bit too gray and not enough black, and so the contrast isn't perfect. I mean, it is white on gray or whatever, whatever color that is. Uh, but I agree with that. I think things like contrast are a big thing. Um, I certainly would, you know, certainly agree with on that. Whether you're wearing glasses or getting older or whatever else, those things diminish, and then you got to figure for the guy that can't read or you know can't see or can't hear, right? You know, how how is your site addressing that and uh, so it, it, it just, it, it's just, just a great topic. I love the chart you had, uh, the checklist. Yes. That was very, very helpful. Do we have the, is it in the link here? Yeah. It's, so it was just Wikipedia. <laughs> Let me, I'll, I'll put, yeah, I'll share it, is it. In, it is in the chat. I think it might be one of the first things. Oh, there. Really yeah. great. Yeah, that, that's yeah, a great the, chart. The, the Wikipedia thing. Yeah. Well, I was looking, I was like, well, how do you spell it out to people? Cause right. I think um, they mentioned that where it's just like, it just seems so like daunting and calm. Like, how do I, where do I even start? Right. So this is what I, that's why I did like that because it's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, narrow this down. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think, um, uh, and there's lots of tools out there, you know, uh, uh, and um, I think you're absolutely right. I think when I, when I first started really discovering this, you know, almost like a contrast Nazi, it was like, I literally was going on, you know, even my stuff and like, oh no, that's, that's not right. You know, and, or, oh, you know, oh gosh, this looks great design, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's not, it's, it's not good. <laughs> uh, and that's a really hard part, right? Because as, as designers, like I've met people who they don't really, you know, website was something that they fell into, but they're designers first. So now all of a sudden they really have to think about that too. You know I mean? Like, so, you know, for the time there, you know, that, that like white, light, white on or light yellow on white looks really nice. You see it in news, different things like that. But when it comes to somebody with poor sight, it's a no go. And, and so now we have to think, I actually thought that um, these guys, uh, I'll share my screen again. I should just leave it on. Um, design wise, they really nailed it. Like, look, they are doing these yellow on white things, but you see how they're like, you know, almost using them as accent or you can see like, like how well they're doing their contrast and still trying to meet those kind of like light, airy, open, you know, kind of vibe, right? Well, when you, or that, you, or, when you went and hovered over the websites for everyone, did it, what did it change to go slow on that one? Not that one, the other one on the left. 
under the equalizer. Yeah, that one there. So no. nothing happens there. You, you see, like, so they, you know, they really they knew they wanted some kind of yellow white. They wanted that light bright, but they knew they needed the contrast. Yeah. And, and you know, just when you start thinking about it, or you start experiencing or noticing it yourself, you're like, wow, that person was really smart. <laughs> yeah. You know, they made really good design choices here. You know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it does limit you sometimes. I think in the design, I think that's where you know, even in in, in our teams and things like that, like. All right, now we got to really talk about it, you know, um, and revisit it. So, um, and another thing I didn't really touch on, and it's something that I'm getting used to too, um, you know, so documents is another one. So, you know, I think I mentioned that last time that I was here, um, you know, uh, we work on some school sites. Um, so, you know, a lot of times documents are just in, in, in kind of a, almost an image form, right? So that doesn't work on a screen reader, right? So making sure that your, your even your documents are, are accessible to to the people that are using it so and a lot of pdf will have that you know where you can save it in, in, in that in that format but we don't even think about that you know or um you know a lot of times we see people just literally posting an image like they, they made a flyer <laughs> you know come see joe schmo's band but it's an image <laughs> you know no screen reader can even doesn't it, there's no content for it right so again um just that basic stuff, like, right? Like, so starting out, like, if you're making a good website, it's probably gonna be accessible, <laughs> right? So I, I think that that's, um, that's the thing. So I'm really excited about it. And that's my journey this year is to get better at doing this and and, and becoming more um, involved in, 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 in that aspect. Um, you know, I'm a WordPress enthusiast, but now I'm also like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, you know, make this part of, 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 of what my skill set is moving forward. I, I just ran a uh, site through um, Google PageSpeed Insights. Yes. And it, it now gives you accessibility. Yeah. Results, it does. So it, yeah. Like performance, accessibility, best practice. SEO. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they just did that like two months ago, I noticed, because I, you know, because that's one of my jobs at work is running the, those, the, the speed web. Um, here, let's, um, Let's see what uh, he was talking about. I'll pull it up for you guys. So, um, and yes, that is another great tool. Thanks for bringing that. So um, web, yeah, it's always in my thing here. Um, we'll just grab this one. And we'll plug it in there. So, um, and I don't know if you guys know this, but this is a speed checker. So this is a great way to, um analyze your website and how fast it's it's loading um but what uh was pointed out um by david is uh it also has these other diagnostics so but i'm sure everything's going to run slow since i'm zooming oh yeah there it is okay right so accessibility right here so if you scroll down there, yeah. Yep. And see, this is the great thing about this tool is it always gives you insights. So the first insights really are about performance, right? But um, if you do scroll down to accessibility, it kind of gives you like, okay, this is this is where you need to work on, right? So there, right there is an auditing tool, a good jumping spot, right? And anytime, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, most of the time, if you're not meeting certain best practices, you might want to look at that too. Um, but yes, so that is the same thing. Um, you'll kind of get this similar report, all these, the, they have the high level? Yeah, right here. So in the lighthouse that I was trying to show you guys with the, um, you know, the, 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 the developer tools or the inspector or whatever, um, this is kind of what you can do. This is basically it's, it's, it's this, but online. And, um, Let's see. One thing you notice, I guess they didn't really come back. So they, yeah, so they actually tested on various mobile devices and various connections too. You know, for whatever that's worth. I think that's more about performance than it would be about accessibility. All right. Um, any input? Anything that I didn't touch on that people feel like would be awesome to uh, bring up and share? Um, the design tools like Figma. We talked about a few months back. 
Um, there are accessibility, there's like contrast checkers, there's plugins. Um, I know that there's a, now I understand it's the WCAG, uh, that A, A, double A, triple A, because it gives you that. It gives right. you those ratings. Yeah. Yeah. Which was, yeah. You know, I thought they made that up <laughs> in the plugin writers, but, but that Figma plugin, it was called, it was called the, uh, this plugin was called Stark. Okay. Plugin for Figma. And um, uh, it will give you that A, double A, triple A. It also depends on the um, size of the text. So it, uh, it, will, it, you might have a contrast that if at 17 pixel text only gets an A rating, but for larger text, it's a double A or a triple A. So, so it does allow you to have lower contrast if the text is big enough. Right. Yeah, which, which is interesting. Yeah. And I don't I don't have the tool here, but it was shared at you know, the meetup, and I wish I would have grabbed it. Um there was this really cool tool that was shared at one of the meetups, and we'd have you know probably could Google it, but there was a way to like all right, I want these two colors, but if I tweak them just a little bit, then I get the right, you know, the right grade that I'm looking for. So you can still stay within your design, but you're like, you know, that that white's gonna need a little gray in it, or that, you know, that 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 dark's gonna need a little white in it. And and, and a lot of times just by shifting that and almost not not noticeable to you as much around the design, um, then you're able to to do that too. Um it seems like uh uh, Rosalinda, I hope I'm saying that right, since um, the, the WP accessibility plugin does a fairly decent job. Um, there's a lot of other W themes out there that are accessibility friendly right out of the box. And it's, it, it is a struggle for any WP user unless you build your own theme from scratch. Um, and if you do use Chrome, this is a great tool to use to check your um, contrast. So the WCA color contrast checker. And it looks like Doug also shared the uh, WordPress um, accessibility uh, meetup that I was telling you all about. And it's another one of those things, like I think Aaron mentioned, where it's pretty early. <laughs> I, um, I think um, Amber, who handles it, is in Texas. So um, a lot of times it's an eight o'clock in the morning <laughs> thing, which is fine with me. You know, I get up early anyway. So um, sometimes it can kind of creep into my work time, but um I definitely think it's definitely worth checking out that meetup for sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I, I kind of short and sweet, guys. <laughs> Mar Marvin had a question there. Yes. Read his question in the. Uh, I, will. Chat. I totally will. So Marvin uh, Della Cruz um, asked. Um, I'm a newbie to WordPress and I'm using GoDaddy WordPress and it seems limited. Does GoDaddy WordPress uh, support plugins and accessibilities? Um, I haven't used GoDaddy that much as far as WordPress. I mean, I use GoDaddy because some of the, the clients that we use um, have GoDaddy, usually, um, you know, more domain uh, name management, DNS, kind of, kind of stuff like that. So, um, I would imagine if it, if they're using WordPress, um, they're going to support a certain amount of plugins because WordPress does support those. I don't know what the tier is on GoDaddy because I know that like say WordPress was it dot or dot com, um, you you know depending on the, the level that you buy in or the tier, right. that's where you get to use plugins or not, right? So yeah. that's one of the drawbacks about using that uh, platform. Although, you know, they, they're updating and they're, they're kind of doing host management for you. So um, that is, is is a bonus, but you, you sometimes have to go to the higher package. Um, and I'm not sure about GoDaddy, so that might be the same market. I, I, I've i never seen Go, I, you know, occasionally I end up logging into someone's GoDaddy account because, you know, that's where the site is. And I've, I've never seen a site that didn't have plugins on it. Let me say yeah. that. And I think a lot of these clients are in a low tier, I think. You know, so yeah, I've never heard of anybody other than WordPress.com, right? The, the, the restricting you from using plugins. So you certainly should be able to add in plugins in a, in GoDaddy, I think. Yeah, I mean, it might be something again where you're limited, like by the tier. But um, I would encourage you, if that is the case, though, to try to find a hosting that doesn't limit you. Um, 
because that is the one thing great about it. Um, let's see here. Aaron said that there is an article here um, that's in the chat so that talks about um, what's new in WordPress for GoDaddy. So that might be a valuable uh, resource for you there, Mark. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to just try adding a plugin. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's how I found out that WordPress.com yeah. didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Because I was trying to do something simple, and then I was like, oh, I have to up the thing just to migrate away from here. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, there's a, again, there's a lot of tools out there in accessibility. Um, the, you know, meetups, uh, the things I shared with you, uh, contrast, the screen readers. Um, you know, I'd say that it's really starting to come come into itself. Like people are starting to really be aware of it. Um, I did, when we were talking about lawsuits, the one thing that I did hear was that um, I think Domino's was the only one that's been sued so far um, for not being accessible, accessible, and that was uh, through a web app. Um, so you know, different than than a um, a website, but similar thing. I think we're starting to see that too. Like, um, you know, McDonald's has kiosks now, <laughs> so you can go up and digitally order your Big Mac and French fries and whatever. You're not even talking to a person, so it's a big screen. So that's going to have accessibility issues, right? So you know, mobility, visual contrast, auditory. You know, what? How is that? So um, I think more and more because we are so digitally involved now that um that we'll be seeing this become a more and more of a, of a thing that people are aware of um i mean uh, let's ask the guys uh all, all you uh, seasoned vets here in wordpress uh were you talking about this two years ago <laughs> no huh no, no. <laughs> yeah and so no. you know i think you know i think it's um anybody who wants to if you're looking for something to you know, develop a skill set around or, you know, um, you know, at the end of the day for me, it just, it just feels good. It actually feels good to, to be working on something. Um, so, you know, sometimes, you know, we can kind of get in the, in the grind. So finding these really kind of, you know, nice little um, additions um, to help, you know, the world be more equitable, the more, the, the, the internet to be more accessible. Um, you know, it's one of those bonuses from doing this kind of work too. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? Hi, I'm done. I, I just got to chime in on one other thing too. You know, I do uh, build a lot of websites and accessibility has certainly shown up, you know, for me as far as uh, helping out a website and clients and things in that order. Uh, but I've been using a, a browser called Polypane and it's a developer tool for as a browser it's not your daily browser because that but it has a lot of accessibility things built into it and it's polypane.app i'll just drop it in there and so i've been using it just started with it and it's been uh pretty cool to get used to it so it's a paid for add-on i don't think it's that much money but i mean if you're developing sites for people because you can uh uh, you know, it's, it's really helpful, especially with accessibility. It can check your headings orders. It can check your images for, you know, assess, you know, for alt text, um, you know, a whole variety of things. That's great. So it's poly, P-O-L-Y-P-A-N-E dot app. Yeah, dot app, yeah. Yeah, all right. That's great. Um, I, I love new tools. I'll have to check it out. It looks like you can even try it for free. You can try it for free, yeah, but it's going to cost at some point. But it's it it's, seems it's great to me, you know, just be able to go through and check, and you can check at the same time different versions of uh, you know your mobile phone, your tablet, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is cool. That's great. You can do it through a tablet. So once you buy it, you can kind of probably download it to, yeah. to your different devices. Yeah. Or are you doing it all kind of like you do with the developer tools where you're actually just doing it? It's it's a developer tool yeah. system, you know, and they're using Chrome to the dev tools. So, you know, okay. you can you can use it just for development too, but uh, but they have an area there for accessibility, a big area for it, for checking, making sure your uh, H1s, 2s, 3s, 4s are all in the proper order, you know, on a page. It's really nice. Yeah, that's great. 
Yeah, I mean, because like for me, you know, just being the noob when I first started out, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> like yeah. I ate one, I just needed it to look bigger. <laughs> right. Right. So, and I think that that happens a lot, especially in headers for people. Is uh, So that's cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that out. Thanks for that. The text on their website is dark against the white background. It's yeah. <laughs> doing that. You know, it's that same kind of thing. If you're, if you're curious about cheese, I don't know, my font, should my font be bigger? The answer is always yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my understanding is WCAG is around 18, right? For the, for the smallest yeah. text. Yeah. It's usually, yeah. Oh, is that right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really depends on the font. There's some fonts that uh, need to be much bigger, you know, than 18 to actually look look good. It just depends on the X height of the type. Right. right. Again, that goes back to making sure your font select, especially for, for um, you know, paragraphs and things like that. Yeah, readability is really interesting, you know, a very good thing for legibility and read legibility of the font that you're using too. Right. Yeah. Actually, to be honest, Comic Sans, you know, gets a, gets a ribbing and kind of deserves it, but for people with dyslexia, it's sometimes the only thing that they can read. I didn't know that. That's cool. It was, it's designed to slow your eyes down as you read because mm -hmm. the, all the font characters are different. There's not any kind of, there's no, um, you know, circular thing. They're just a little change in size, change in height, uh, because they're basically out of comic books. There was a, I always love this story, but there was a, uh, doctorate uh, doing her large thesis, 300 page thesis, and she has terrible dyslexia and she wrote it in Comic Sans because they said that was the only way I could read what I was writing and, and study. And then she did this great thing. She actually published it in Comic Sans, <laughs> which I thought was great. It's funny because I, I, I do rip on Comic Sans, so now I won't. <laughs> well, you know, I had I had a client in my last career um, before I was a web designer who uh, always wrote documents in Comic Sans because he said it was easier for him to read. Yeah. 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 Any, any, is there any, um, well, anybody want to comment on serif versus sans serif fonts? Um, you know, for, for uh, paragraph text, I, for me personally, I always find a good, serif font easier for my eye to track it's easier for me to read like if i'm reading a long pair long paragraphs and stuff serif fonts are easier in general to read for my eye just to stick to it so something about the the um you know the little flags and the little feet and whatever else they put on the the letters you know my, my eye has something to grab onto yeah I think they've done some studies and they, they always, people always refer to Garamond as a really good serif font to read. Yeah. Uh, and it, it is, you know, it's, it's a very good one, but you got to make it a little larger, mm -hmm. but I like serif fonts. If a client is using larger paragraphs, it seems to really track well when you have many more sentences in a paragraph than nowadays, the trend is like, every sentence deserves to be a paragraph, you know, which is kind of crazy as far as I'm concerned, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even talking about fonts, um, the importance of not having centered text, right? Like, you know, one or yeah. two lines. Yeah. And, and everybody have everything to the left. <laughs> yes. You know, because that's how we, we approach it. So, you know, people that have those, those kind of cognitive things or, you know, like dyslexia, it's, yeah. it's a lot easier for them to, to, to get your content. Cool. Yeah. Anything else, folks? Anything else? I guess my talk was quick and just a little too quick, huh? <laughs> well, no, we're over. We're past the hour. Okay. So that's, uh, that's uh, yeah. I didn't want more to than, go forever. <laughs> more than meeting the requirements. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, well, Ethan, thank you. This was great. Great resources. I had no idea the, the Wikipedia page had so much. Yeah. That actually looks like a really good resource. And I, every one of those, uh, and Aaron, thank you for including all of those links in the chat. I clicked on every one of them as they came up, and I figure I'll keep that browser open and look at it in the next 24 hours, go try to go through those and 
bookmark them and all that. But um, really good set of resources there and good, uh, really, not, for me, it's nice to know that you have some of that stuff in the dev tools. I didn't realize that was there. Yep. You know, that kind of stuff was, it was in there. The accessibility stuff was in there. Yeah. And like you pointed out, even the, the, the speed or the optimization tools that Google has now is like looking at. So I think more and more people are aware of it. You know, it's, 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 it's something we have to think about now. Yeah. Uh, I use the cadence theme and I now you're making me want to go and look at how do you navigate that theme without a mouse? Because that's another one of those things, right? You should be able to use your keyboard only. Absolutely. And, uh, and that screen reader. I don't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but um, but I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if Cadence has that built in. I don't know that for sure, but. Right. I want to go look at it, so. Yeah, I mean, um, something that I'm kind of seeing privately, I don't, I wouldn't say I know everything, but um, I think menus are, are, are can be really troublesome oh, for navigation. Really? Right. What was that? Sorry, I missed, missed that. Uh, menus, you know, just your mega menus, you know, all those menus uh, in the navigation. So, yeah, that's a great place to even look too for your navigation again. You know? um, yeah. Like I said, I came across a site that literally was not using any uh, semantic code. <laughs> and that just, you know, it's just impossible for for anybody with, with a screen reader, at least. So. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for the opportunity, you guys. Yeah, yeah. This was this was great. I, got, I definitely got a good set of resources to go and explore and learn more. And I got questions. Like I say, uh, Rosalinda says Cadence is a pretty good accessible theme out of the box. So I'm gonna go and investigate some of the. I, I wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if they've got a blog post on that. You know, so. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Oh yeah, Aaron even linked the uh, the voiceover for Apple's Mac, which is cool. Um, I kind of played with that too. It, that was a really great one to to play around with too, as far as navigation and understanding that. So, yeah, boy, this rabbit hole was pretty deep, man. Looking at looking at how look, you know how many things were listed in that Wikipedia um, uh, entry, and and you get a sense that it's there. You know, there's people out there still working on more things that are good practices and you know <laughs> i think it's evolving it's very organic yeah. right not only is your website always evolving you need to be auditing it but the, but the understanding of accessibility is, is evolving you know um so you know like i said there's people on the cutting edge you know that are thinking about things that we we that you know they're they're working right in there solving and coming up with the solution so um like i said people like um uh, Equalize Digital. I mean, I think I'm really impressed at, at what those people are doing, and and they're like literally just. I mean, they they got their own business, but they're like literally sharing. You know, there is no proprietor or, or hiding secrets or anything like that. So, I think that if, if anybody wants to know, it's out there to know. Yeah, and, and be nurtured. You know. So. so. Cool. All right, everybody. Well, if there's no more questions. I think that's a wrap for this evening. And um, again, Ethan, thank you. That was fantastic. And, yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. And um, we will catch you guys in a month. Right on. Everyone have right. a good, good February. All right. Have a good, uh, yeah, that's right. Have a good month. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very thank you much. Yep, you're welcome. Yep.